All right, what you got there? All right, we got some great email here. A viewer oh. writes, my husband is transitioning out of the Army and going back to civilian life. We've been praying for him to find a job, and he has. I'm praising God because he answered our prayers, but my husband does not want to take the job because it doesn't pay enough for what his master's degree says he should be making in business. Should he humble himself, take the job, and hope God might open another door down the road? I want to be submissive, but I don't want us to miss our, our blessings either. I tell you what, you know the old so your your degree and a nickel get you a cup of coffee. I mean, I think uh, a master's degree really is worth very little these days in terms of of hard currency. Uh, jobs are hard to come by, and if he's got a, a good job lined up and possibly he's got a pension from his military service. I tell you, I'd take it and then begin to work up and get some skill. I don't know what skill he's got, but, quote, master's degree doesn't give you the skill necessarily you need. It's a nice thing to have in some fields. And we give master's degrees, I say 23 of them in the region. But uh, I, I, if I were your husband, I'd, I'd take the job, take the job, and then learn some skills. And then if he wants to start looking around, that's fine. All right, what else? All right, our leader writes, my husband and I have been married for almost six years. But we have been together almost 10 years. For the past three years, after he said he gave his life to Jesus and got baptized, our life has been like a living hell because he still lives a worldly lifestyle. I feel that he has not fully given his life over to God. He watches porn on the computer and goes on dating sites all the time. I don't want to have sex with him any longer because of all of this. What can I do? <laughs> this is her you husband. Know, her husband's going on dating sites? Did I just read that correctly? Yeah, and watches porn. Uh, you know, I want to say, you married a rascal. You married him. I mean, what are people thinking? I mean, what did you think you were getting? Don't you make any effort to discern what your future spouse thinks, what he is? Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, some guys do a good job of faking it until they walk down the aisle. And you think that's it? I've heard that. Well, I've yeah. never walked down the aisle, so I don't yeah. know, but I've All heard right. that, you know. Well, in this case... I don't know what you do. Maybe uh, trial separation. Uh, it, it just sounds like, I don't know, he needs counseling. Uh, he needs help. Uh, but what is with the porn sites? What's wrong with him? He obviously hasn't come to Jesus, and so he needs to meet the Lord. So I believe I'd start praying to that end, possibly something to shake him out of that lethargy, but, quote, I don't want to have sex with him because, I mean, I don't know. It's, I'd, I'd take a hammer to that computer. <laughs> You I'd, I'd take a hammer, hammer to that well, computer. You buy another one. You don't want to hammer the man's computer. What a terrible thing. To <laughs> do it. Yeah. Right, I'm just kidding. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you <laughs> married him. You say, what should I do? Well, he needs counseling. He needs to find the Lord. So I'd get him in some kind of a church or fellowship and where somebody who uh, is an older man uh, could deal with him and, and talk to him about the problems. He obviously has a problem. All right. All right. Grace writes, will saints in the end times during the millennium with glorified bodies really not be able to have children? Um, I think you've got it mixed up. Saints in the millennium will be, during the millennium, they're going to be human beings here on earth. Uh, the people in heaven, Jesus said those uh, at the resurrection are like the angels. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. You don't have sex. Angels don't have sex. Because well, they, they live forever, so they don't reproduce themselves. Right. Uh, that's heaven. Millennium, life on earth of, of peace and, and, and joy. Human beings, yes, you'll, they, in a millennium, if it's the way some people think it is, then they'll be married, they'll be human beings, they'll be living normal lives on earth with some peace. Uh, that, that's the way it'll be. In heaven, no marriage, no children, no sex. <laughs> All right, Jade writes, I've never been baptized, and my two friends from different churches both believe if I'm not baptized before Jesus returns, I'll not only go to hell, but be put into the lake of fire. One friend says I should be baptized in Jesus' name and speak in tongues to prove I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. The other says it needs to be in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Who's right? And will I really never see heaven if I'm not baptized? <laughs> 
I tell you what, when I baptize people, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I take care of all of it. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I just, so you, you don't have to worry. I think we've got some super fundamentalist Pentecostals who watch this show, mm -hmm. and you're taught some super fundamentalist things that aren't biblical. They right. just aren't biblical. All that stuff about you going to hell if you don't get baptized. If you don't get baptized with a special formula, you're going to hell. No way. That's not what the Lord says. It is faith in Jesus Christ, a spiritual transaction that takes place, and that's it. Uh, and then from then on out, if you have given your heart to Him, you live for Him. I mean, that's, that's what it is. You walk with Him. As we walk in the light, as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, continuously cleanses us from sin. That's what the Bible says. All right. Amen. Okay. All right. Ronald writes, I put 10% of my income into the offering plate at church. I'm very faithful about that, so it upsets me when I see someone panhandling or begging, and I get grief for passing them by. I gave to God at my church. Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough. You see a poor people, help them. You know, listen, God will bless you. You call it tithes and offerings, and they, they, you give tithes, and then these are offerings, and you see a poor person giving it. It be given unto you. Give to those who ask of you and so forth. But I tell you what, if you see some bum out on the street who's a professional beggar, yeah. you, know, you know how to frustrate his intention. He says, would you give me some money for food? Yes, here's, a, here's an automatic across the street. Let's go over and I'll buy you some lunch. He doesn't want lunch. He wants money to get some booze. Uh, you know, so yeah, but in New York, the gimmick used to be, well, I've got to get across the river to New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I left my family in New Jersey. Would you give me the money to get the ferry or whatever over to New Jersey? I mean, no. I mean, it's a bunch of lies. You, you need to, these are professional bums, and you have mm -hmm. to deal with them. But if you can help them along the way, but... Uh, if you see somebody that's poor and needy, give to them. Give to them. You, you're not, uh, the 10% is the minimum. Minimum. All right. 